when you complete your animation and want to create a video of your animation to turn in, then that's when we need to use a Play Blast. By right-clicking on the timeline, we can see Play Blast is the final option, but we need to go into the option box to tweak the settings a little bit to make sure that we're getting the kind of file that we want. Uh, first, we need to make sure that we are in a format that is a video file. There you have single image. This is QuickTime AVI if you're using Windows. Encoding is up to you to experiment with. I've had mixed results, but this will create a smaller video file at the cost of some quality. If you're worried about quality, leave it at none. You'll get the largest possible file. But there's probably a setting here that is going to result in a better quality file at a much smaller video size. So if you're getting very large files, then mess around with that and try a few to see what sort of results you can get. You can leave this quality setting, 70% is the default, 100% would be absolutely no loss whatsoever. The display size, uh, this is from window, typically when we're just doing animation previews. This would only be from render settings if you were uh, composing a final rendered image and want to preview it at its default size. This means that if your window is small on your computer uh, screen, then you're going to get a very small video. And if it's larger, you're going to get a larger video. So typically I'll leave my window at a good, decent, large size if I'm going to create a play blast from window. The scale, the default is 50%, but I always just move this up to 100% and control it uh, in the user interface. And then padding has no bearing on this unless we're exporting images. Finally, down here, it is not the default, if I just reset these very quickly, it's not the default to save a file. It will just produce a video image that I don't know where it goes. It disappears once you close it, but you want to click Save to File and then designate a location for that file to be saved to. Typically, I'll just put it on the desktop and then give it some obvious name, Night Animation. And then when you're ready to export your animation, you hit Play Blast and it will create it for you. So let me double check the settings once more. We're going to have format of AVI, no encoding, 70% quality is okay from window, scale of one, and then that should be fine. So I'm gonna hit Play Blast. What this is doing is just taking screenshots of everything that's happening inside of this window, literally everything that's happening inside that window. So if you can see, for instance, uh, the name of the window is down here, all of the curves that I was using are visible. If I had selected things, that would be visible. And it's doing it based on your timeline settings. So right now we're not getting a loop of animation like I would like. I want to just isolate the idle animation. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and then select my figure and then check where does this idle animation stop? It stops right at frame 70. So you may have to control your timeline a little bit by limiting the playback range. You can do that by clicking and dragging these squares until you hit the appropriate number or by uh, entering in new numbers in the inner set of these two fields. The outer field is the maximum amount of time that you have in your file and the inner set is what you are currently viewing. So now I'm viewing from frame 10, which is where my idle starts, to frame 70. And so this will loop seamlessly. Uh, if we're doing animation tests only, you can leave your controllers visible a lot of the time unless they start to get um, to be distracting. Uh, if they are distracting, then we can go up to the show menu and turn off curves, and that will make it so that now we are only seeing geometry. If I choose Play Blast one more time, since I've already set my settings, it will just ask, do I want to replace the video file as long as it's closed? And you can say, okay. It will run through one more time, taking screenshots. And now here's my completed animation cycle. One last note is that sometimes you'll see a little hitch at the end of the playback range where there's a slight pause. And that's because I have my starting and ending positions both visible in my animation and they are the same position. So 70 and 10 are identical. So it plays through my animation, it comes back, and we just linger there for a moment on frame 70. You can limit your animation playback by one frame or maybe two so that it doesn't freeze like that at the end. But to be honest, certain video players will freeze no matter what you do and won't play continuously on a loop. And then some will play continuously on a loop appropriately. But we'll just try this once more to see if it plays better. 
and I've noticed that VLC does hitch a little bit, but that appears at least slightly better. So it's not unusual for you to do work that would span from 10 to 70, but then only to show 10 to 69, because that will make the playback loop seamlessly. Okay. So this is the file that you would save and turn in uh, for your homework or to display online or to share with people, keeping in mind that this is not a rendered final result. This is just for animation preview, but it makes for a very easy way for you to share your animation. Really quickly, I just wanted to show that I did a test with each of my available um, codecs for creating a play blast and got some very different results, um, depending on the one you choose. With no encoding at all, I've got a file the size uh, 348 megabytes, which is greater than a quarter gigabyte. It's gigantic. So that's kind of un unacceptable. Um, with IYUV, I got a medium size, uh, which is 84 megabytes, still fairly large for the length of video, only two seconds long, but the quality was excellent. And then finally with CRAM at 100% quality, and I did have to turn it up because it looked awful if I didn't, I got the smallest file at all at about eight megabytes. So I would recommend typically if you're just going to share your video online, use CRAM at 100%. Um, it won't give you the prettiest file, but it will give you a serviceable, easy to share file. If the quality is really, really poor, then switch over to IYUV, and then you can turn the quality settings down quite a bit to save some space because it looked excellent even at 70% quality.